Hello, and welcome to a new series called Demos in the Zim Editor with Dr. Abstract. And I am Dr. Abstract. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework for coding creativity. We can see all sorts of features across the top here. There's style and Zim pen and emitters. And you can press on any of those to go into the editor, or you can press the Feature Demos uh, button to go into the editor. But down below, we have a new banner for the editor itself, new circle.center.drag, and here's where we start. So when we press on this, it's going to go to the editor with a start example. Yay! So this is the editor, and it's saying press the code tab and read instructions. So there's the code tab. We have a bunch more examples, a bunch more demos called zaps in here. And for any one of those, you can view them and then see their code. So I'm going to press the code section for our example. Welcome to the Zim editor. Zim examples are in the first panel of the editor. That's here. And to edit, press the code and then use the yellow arrow. So right here, use the yellow arrow to copy the code to the edit panel. That's over here. So here's where we type over here. We'll grab the code from over here. If we want, we can type our own code as well. So we're going to do that. Yay, that copies it on over. And then we view the test button right here, test. So this is actually showing what we've got over here in the editor, which currently is a new circle. It's 100 in radius and red and centered, and we're allowed to drag it. Yay! We've stored that in a variable uh, called circle so that we can use it later because we're going to use it down in the tutorial below. All right, so this is JavaScript that we're coding in. And what does this label do? Let's see, press the code tab and read the instructions in its position. So the code below is just to help us find the code thing. So we can get rid of this as saying, hey, just delete that. So there we are, I deleted that, and now if I hit test, that label is gone. Okay, good, a background. Normally we code in a text editor, such as VS Code, and there's other editors as well that you can use. Uh, we would use the Zim template at that location right there on our front page, there's a code tab. And then you would paste that template into the editor and you would save that and then view it in a browser, etc., upload it to a server, etc. But if you don't have a server, then you might want to try Zim right here in the editor. The editor has the template built in. It's also got extra options up at the top here, so we can make it square, for instance, and test or portrait and hit test. And so that's a portrait mode. We can make it look like a mobile device. All right, you get the idea. And then across the top are also various libraries that we might bring in. We're going to use Pizzazz in this one, so uh, we've got the pizzazz checked. Zim has a frame that loads a stage, and this gray area is a stage, and that will put it in, in that frame there like that and automatically scale it, which is nice. Okay, uh, so we're given the frame, the stage, the width of that, and the height of that, or these uh, longer variable names. So the modern way is to use the short ones. In the past, many examples had the longer words, so we'll, um, we've got both of them here in the editor. All right, so here's our tutorial. Here are some tips and things to try. Lines with the uh, forward slashes there are comments, and they can be ignored. Uppercase and lowercase matter. Uh, or sorry, don't ignore the code. They'll be ignored by code. <laughs> you can read the comments. <laughs> all right, so this is JavaScript with Zim commands. See the docs for all the Zim commands? So here's docs right here. If we press docs, there's all of the various commands that we can use. There's the circle. And you can expand that open and see information about the circle examples that you can just copy right in if you want and see what all the parameters are, such as the radius and the color. Okay, so anyway, we'll just test them. Learn more about Zim at the Learn section in Zim, and then select and use Control slash to comment or uncomment below. Right, so we have some tutorials here that we can uncomment a little bit at a time. So if you sit on the line and go Control slash like that, then that will comment or not comment, Control slash. If you select all these lines and go Control slash, 
then that will select them all. Oh, I had a double comment in there. <laughs> right, so the idea is if we wanted to, do you wanna see what we're building? We can just select all of this stuff right up to there and hit control slash. If you do that, all of those previous comments, so this is a comment, but here's our code. This is a comment and this is our code. And all that works out well and we hit test. Are you ready to see what we're gonna make? There it is. Ooh, so a little label uh, animates in and says, throw circle in can. Okay, boop, hey, once it's in the can, the can goes red and there's a little recycle. And we do that and the circle comes back. Boop, so that's a little tutorial about some of the things that we can do in Zim. So why don't we undo that, control Z, so you can undo, or if you wanted to, once we had all of this uncommented, where to go to there. So that's it now, uncommented. And, oops, the very first one, sorry for that. The very first one, uh, we don't want that stuff. Okay, right. So take this and uncomment like so. There we've got it uncommented. If we want, we can um, hit control slash again and it toggles those comments. That's just what I was wanting to show you there. All right, let's do the first batch. So we do that one like that. And here we are showing that we can set up a frame color. So this is using the F for frame. Set its color to blue and its outer color to gray. Here's the outer color and there's the color. Let's test. So now we haven't done all the rest of the stuff with the trash can and the, and the lines and stuff. This is just a first step to set the frames color to blue. That's here. And then the outer color to gray. Or if you wanted to, you could make it dark and you can hit save or dark and hit save or you could make it yellow and hit save all right so i'm hitting control s for save or you can hit the test so that works as well we're often used to when we type in an editor we're used to control s for a save or command s if on the mac and that will work here as well to save or to test right there uh okay well that was yellow let's change it back to gray how we had it there we go we can still drag the circle because that's up here Right here. All right, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to make a trash can. So I'll comment out the trash stuff. Control slash or uh, Apple slash. So now we have a cons trash that's a rectangle this time and purple. Well, let's test it. So there's our purple rectangle. We've positioned it at the right at the bottom. And so that's 50 and 50 at the, from the right. So 50 pixels from the right and 50 pixels from the bottom. You could do from the left bottom or from the left top or indeed from the right top or we had it at the right bottom. <laughs> the right bottom. So that's where our trash is going to be. Uh, what else have we added? Circle dot on press up. So this is called called an event. And if you if you've used JavaScript before, we have add event listener in JavaScript in Zim, uh, which is based on CreateJS. CreateJS provided the on method, so it's just the same as add event listener basically, except shorter. <laughs> so circle dot on press up. So when we are pressing like this, and when we press up on the circle. Uh, we're going to check to see if the circle is hitting the trash. There's a bunch of different hit tests in Zim. Here's what it looks like if it is hitting the trash. Great. Oh, now we've lost it. Hit test again. Uh, if we haven't hit the, tr the trash, then it doesn't do that. There's a whole bunch of hit tests. One is called, <laughs> conveniently, a hit test circle rect to find out if a circle shape is hitting a rectangular shape. There's also hit test circles, hit test rec, hit test circle, hit test bounds, hit test reg, hit test point, hit test grid, hit test path. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Have you got all those? Repeat them after me. <laughs> uh, alrighty. So there's a hit test to find out if the circle is hit. The circle goes with the circle and the rectangle, which is the trash, goes with the rectangle. So hit test circle the trash. If that's true, then circle dot remove from that will remove the circle from the stage trash dot color is equal to red we're going to change the color of the trash 
and we're going to update the stage to see the change. Otherwise, you won't see it. So sometimes this will happen to you. I'm going to hit the trash. Note that it didn't, it didn't go away. I'm hitting the trash, but watch. If I just change this a little bit, as soon as I rescale the stage, that also does a stage.update, and the, the circle went away. So we don't want to update everything automatically because that would wear out the batteries. So we let the developer, the creator, the coder, that's you, update the stage whenever you need to. So in this case, we are saying stage.update to make that change. And let's do a test again. You ready? Now when we drop it and hit, it happens right away. All right, then reset the circle when pressing the trash. Oh, okay, so when we press with a mouse down on the trash, or that could have been a click on the trash. A click is when you press down and then press up. Mouse down is as soon as you hit mouse down. Bop, there we go. Set the trash's color back to purple and update the stage again. Oh, what happened to the circle? All oh, right, center the circle. So center the circle, that will automatically center it and put it back on the stage as well, and then update that stage. We've also set the cursor of the trash to be a pointer. Uh, it doesn't really need to be a pointer now, I suppose. It only needs to be a pointer at this point. We <laughs> maybe could update that. Let's see, uh, if we throw it out, then we want the pointer there. So maybe put this one in here. Otherwise, you want a cursor that's a, a default cursor in here. That would be cursor. I think it's default like that. And let's see if, what that does. Okay, so the cursor is default. We throw it in there. Now it has a cursor. And now it's back to default because we can't operate on it. Uh, so that might have, well, anyway, whatever. Might have been easier. Okay, so what's the next stage here? That was that add patterns and icons. Everybody doing okay? If this ever goes too long, if you need a break, you're always welcome to go get a cookie. Hit the pause button, go get a cookie. We figure this will probably be oh, about 20 minutes or so, and we'll try and keep our demos to about that time as well, because we're not typing the code ourselves. We're just revealing the code that's already there. All right, so let's uh, continue to reveal, and then hopefully at the end, we'll just take a quick peek at the zaps and some of the things that we might be doing in the future. All right, so we select that and go control slash make pattern. All right, so what we've got is this thing called pizzazz is checked on. And we uh, what happens is when you save a file, we've saved this file so that you can view it. When we save the file, it remembers which of these helper libraries we've turned on so that you know you don't have to remember. But if you were typing from raw and you needed to make a pattern, you'd have to make sure that pizzazz is turned on. Pizzazz has patterns, pizzazz has icons, and pizzazz has um, backgrounds or, uh, yeah, background shape kind of things. Okay, here we are making a pattern of slants. I think this had to do with the color, but we're just using the default colors. And this might be the thickness or the size of the slants. And this is the number of columns and the number of rows or something like that. <laughs> In the docs, you can look up. Uh, and I think at the bottom here, no, we don't. Uh, I'll, I'll put it at the bottom, make sure that all of our links to the, um, to the docs are there at the bottom. Thought they were there, but we missed it. So that's the, the patterns. We're lowering the alpha on that. Otherwise, it would be very black and white. So that's how in Zim we can chain on. This is called chaining when we keep on adding these methods. Ooh, isn't that exciting? But make sure that the semicolon goes right at the end. So if we put the semicolon here, there would be an error. All right. So we've set the alpha to lower, and alpha goes between 0 and 1. We're not really trying to teach you Zim in this example. There's all sorts of, um, there's the basics tutorials to do that. There's coding with JavaScript to do that. There's all sorts of different tutorials in the learn section to teach you Zim. We'll do a little bit of that because it'd be nice for you to know as you're exploring this editor. Uh, but um, we're not totally teaching JavaScript right now, not totally teaching Zim. We're kind of showing you this example in the editor. <laughs> Yay. So there's going to be some people that, you know, know all about Zim and are going, oh, okay, get on with it. I know what the semicolon will do, blah, blah, blah. And then there's people who are new, but we did say start. So, you know, we're catering more towards the people who are new here. Is that all right? So if you're a newbie, yay, go newbies. Zim's so easy, though, that it hopefully won't be hard for you. 
Anyway, we're making the patterns, we're centering them on the stage, and we're putting them at the bottom because every time you add something to the stage, it's gonna go on top. So if we didn't put it at the bottom, well, because we've alpha that, you can see that the transparency is showing the circle through there. But if that were one, then, oh, <laughs> we still, still see the circle. Oh, that's fun, can't we play it? I don't know. But anyway, so this is the pattern on top, and that by default, that's what slants does. It just just makes a bunch of black slanting things. If we didn't make this big enough, say 20 and 20, then we would see something like this. So that's a 20 and 20. All right, um, let's undo that and make it 70 and 70 and bring back the alpha of 0 0.01, I think we had. And if we want, we should put that on the bottom. So that puts it at the bottom. Well, <laughs> that's too much. 0.1, I think it was. Yeah, there we go. Now the circle's on top of the slants. Great, and so is the trash can. Make icon. So we're also using an icon here. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? We got an icon from Pizzazz called the Rotate icon. We're making it white, have a bit of a transparency to show a touch of purple through that and we're centering it on the trash. So the trash is that rectangle, and there's the icon centered on the trash. Just be a little bit careful there. A rectangle, you're not really supposed to put things in a rectangle. It's, it is a container, and you can do it, but we've turned off the children of that, so that means you couldn't, um, say, drag that little, that little icon because it's inside a rectangle that has its children is pretending it doesn't have any. You'd have to turn the mouse children of that rectangle on, and then you could drag the little uh, thing there. So usually we would make a container, put the rectangle in a container, put the icon in a container, and then we have no problems. But we took a little shortcut there and just put that right on the, because we don't need to drag this thing at all. Oh, note, I never thought of that. Hmm, yeah. Okay. I see. So perhaps we do want, either we want to deactivate completely the garbage can so you can't keep on recentering it. <laughs> so there's our special, special uh, Easter egg. Yay! <laughs> anyway, so maybe if, if we are doing something with the trash, as in doing that, perhaps we will take the cursor and keep it down below. So that was uh, this one right here. I'll just cut that out of there. Cut that out. Delete that one completely and just say, uh, there, once we've, uh, I guess that would still do, but anyway, whatever, no big deal. Um, great, make a label, so let's see what's next. We'll unzip, or not unzip, <laughs> uncomment that. <laughs> you can tell I've been doing some unzipping. So, make a label, optionally use style. So here we are introducing Zim style. Here's how you do it, you say style. This is very much like CSS, for instance. And we're saying the background color is white. So let's test this out. There it is. We've also got an alpha of 0.7 and a scale of 0.7 on the throw the circle. Uh, it looks like, let's do a test again. Yeah, it's just sitting there. So we animate in the label later and talk more about that. So this is that label. We've set the skew of the label to 10. These are called short chainable methods. So Zim's got a whole bunch of short chainable methods. Do you want to see them? So here's Zim, the docs, we're going back to the top, and I'm just going to go under methods right here, methods. So here are ones that come sort of with CreateJS. Here are some methods for adding and removing things. Here are all the short little chainable ones. Oh, look at all those short little chainable methods. And again, you press on any of them to find out what they do. And then we've got uh, ones for interactions, tapping and holding and dragging. And then we've got hit tests. So those are those hit tests that we were looking at earlier and stuff for animating and various general uh, methods as well. Okay, so lots of things in Zim. We're just taking a peek at a few of them at the moment. And we're locating that. That locates it at the... Uh, so that's locating the registration point. This one's not center reg. So anything rectangular, like a label, like this rectangle, they usually have their, their registration point at the top left corner. And that's something that you'll have to look at. There's some Zim Basics uh, right here in the editor that talk about registration points. But anyway, that's top left corner. Locate positions that registration point at 50-50. So 50 in and 50 down. 
that's what we're doing. So a little bit different than pose. Pose will almost look like that, but pose positions the edge. See, the registration point, if it's here, is not 50 pixels from the edge. It's actually the other side of, of the rectangle is 50 pixels. So this um, pose positions from the edges rather than from the registration point. Loc positions the registration point. All right, animating the label. Wow, okay, let's see it. Oh, we're almost done, my goodness. So I'm going to uncomment the animating. And oh, maybe just a little bit more about the style. We don't have to put the background color in there. We could have put the background color in there as a parameter. But then we know we have to know the order of the parameters. Right now, the very first parameter of a label is just what it says. But the next parameter is something else. I don't think it's background color. It's, it's other things. We, we know by looking at the docs here. You can type in label like that and hit enter. So the first parameter is the text, then the size, then the font, then the color, then the roll color, then the shadow color, blah, 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 blah. Where's the background color? Holy moly, it's way over here. So the background color, um, it's not often or not all the time that we actually put a rectangle around text. So these other things that relate to text a bit more, like bolds and italics, they come first. So it would have taken us a while to get there with... Um, with parameters, we could have, if we wanted to, change this to the Zim Duo technique and said text is throw, like that. And so we put squiggly brackets around the whole thing. And then the next one is background, background, color, colon, whatever, red. Okay, so now this background color would override write the, um, the previous uh, one. And as, as well, you, there's a little um, trick. You can also put BG color. So now oh, it's saying there's an error. We, we haven't got a comma in there. So there we go. Now the background color is red. And if we didn't have an alpha 0.7, you would really see that. Oh, look at that. That is very red. So this background color is um, overriding that one. Or overriding either one, I guess, would work. Okay, so Zim style is there. We can style other things as well, all sorts of things. We could also say we want style just for labels. Uh, to do that, you would say the label gets these styles and you would put squiggly brackets around styles for the label. Uh, it's a little bit different than CSS in that we use, uh, we don't use semicolons, we would use commas in there. So let me show you that. So background color of white, comma, size, colon uh, 50. And now when that comes in, that's, uh, well, did we specify the size in here? No. So let's make it even bigger so that we can see that. Okay, there it is. It's so big that the animation didn't even start off correctly. We started it not far enough off the stage. So anyway, there you go. That's uh, using commas instead of semicolons. So where were we? We'll back out of this. So anyway, that's a way to get to parameters directly with this thing called the Zim Duo technique. And you'll see examples of that as well in the other zaps. It's very important in Zim, very, makes Zim very efficient. So we've set that back to how it was, except our alpha is still too high. And as a matter of fact, down below here, we were going to talk about our animation. And that says, uh, here we use the Zim Duo or use Zim Duo to pass a config object. So this is us. We could have made animation work a little bit differently, but here we put it in this configuration object where we say the parameter name as a property, parameter name as a property. So this is Zim Animate now. We're saying, hey, please animate the label. The properties we want to animate is animate its X from 300. So we have a from. Uh, this is a, a nice easy way. You can position the label right where you like it and then animate from a position of negative 300. So that's off the stage. Here, let's just change that to a positive 300. There it is at 300. Did you see that? I'll refresh again. It was positioned at 300 and then it, it animated to wherever we started, which is right there. Uh, so that could, you know, it's a little bit possibly confusing for you. There it is animating from where it started. So here's where it started, 50-50. And if I hit test, it animates over to 300. 
Note that we're adding a wait here as well. So a wait of one second. If we get rid of that, it animates as soon as I hit test. Okay. But what we're doing is we're animating not to negative 300, because that would look like this. <laughs> there, there it goes, animating off to negative 300, but instead animating from negative 300. That's just a little bit easier because we don't have to, we can position it and view it nicely and we don't have to swap this later. And here's our weight. We're also spending a time of 0.5 seconds and we have an ease of back out. Let's make the time 1.5 and we can really see that ease come in. Whoa, what do you think? Here's elastic out, elastic out, twang. Do you like that? Twang. If we're waiting that long, maybe we don't even need the weight because, uh, well, okay, we need a little bit of a weight, but less of a weight, perhaps, 0.5. There we go, nice. So that's what the editor is for, for you to come in and try out all of this stuff. You can read about animate in the docs to see all of the things there. You would go animate like this in the docs. And wow, we can do a lot of things when we animate. Here's information about animation. Here's examples of animating. So animating the alpha and the scale. This is a short version uh, where we do the normal parameters. There's the properties, here's the time, here's the ease, and here's a callback. So what function to call when we're done. And here it is in a slight, well, maybe something slightly different where we're using the Zim Duo technique. So that clearly shows the difference between the two. You can study that. So all sorts of animation examples and then information about um, what the animation parameters are. So here's the props parameter, a whole bunch of information about that, animating along paths and orientation. There's the time parameter, the easing. So here are the different types of eases that you can do. What function to call, if we want to loop, etc. So lots of stuff there, but Zim makes it really easy to do this. We're at least half the size, well, more like a tenth the size of animation in CSS. And we're on par with what we can do with animations to things like Greensock, et cetera. And we do some things even better. So that's nice. So Greensock's wonderful as well. Now try the basic Zaps demos. Yay! So we're nearly there, huh? Okay. So that's good. Here's where the rest of the Zaps are. And I'm just going to log out so you can see it normally. So here's the features. These are from the banners. So those are all of the examples in the banners. Then under basics, here's where we were starting. And now you can take a look at shapes, for instance, and blobs and transforms and dragging and dropping and animating. So have a look at those basic demos probably next would be good. And maybe we can go over some of those in the next video. Does that sound good? Oh, what else did I want to show you? Is there anything else? So all you do is you just um, press it. So here's a bunch of different types of buttons. Wow. And you can view the code for that. And once you do this, if I do this like that, it says, do you want to overwrite your code? If I say no, it doesn't. Because what would happen is all this code will come into this window here. And we want to make sure that we're done with this window. If you want, you can hit uh, file and well if you log in uh, yeah I hit file I guess that that one will just download it so that saved the file down there but if you want to log in then you can uh, you can do so you can log in and start saving files and start sharing files and then your files will will show up in here uh, with saved files so you can make lists and, uh, and share them with people that's the idea. The editor is great for teachers as well. I am Dr. Abstract, uh, this fellow right here. Woo and this has been Demos in the Zim Editor. That's our very first one. Come and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack and zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to help you out if you have any questions there. Uh, hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Have a great day or night.